everyone says the 2024 Mustangs are duds. They're way slower than the S550. So today we're gonna see if that is the truth with this device right here. If you don't know what this is, this is called a draggy. It tracks your quarter mile times, your eighth mile times, your zero to 60, your 60 to 130 endless things you can pretty much track whatever you want it's a super cool device i've had it for a few years now it is worth it it's 160 bucks i think but it's well worth it we're going to be seeing what the s650 does from zero to 60 and see if it's a dud or not you guys are saying it's a dud you're saying it's slower than s550s and whatnot this thing is really accurate so we're going to get some accurate zero to 60 times on my mustang s650 here is my 2024 mustang in race red it does have aftermarket wheels and tires but i still have the carbon traps in there and the factory air intakes i also have a ford performance x pipe and Steeda lowering springs, but that is it. That is all the performance stuff I have. No headers, just an X-pipe, lowering springs, and aftermarket wheels and tires. Yo, FedEx just pulled up. I don't know if we're getting anything today. Hopefully, I'm waiting on some parts. It's Sunday, I don't even know why they're here. Not looking like we're getting anything. One thing that's gonna give me a little advantage is I do have fat tires in the back. They're 315, 35, 20 Michelin Pilot Sport all season fours. Don't be fooled though, because we're only packing 486 horsepower out of this thing and the tires do still squeal and spin a little bit between shifts and drag mode. So don't be fooled by the fat tires. All right, so we got the GoPro on for extra angles. We're gonna head to Mexico. Warm start. All righty, so we're in drag mode, advanced track off. I actually do have a video on how to do a dig in a 10 speed Mustang. I'll link that up here or over there. But yeah, this is the first one. We'll do a few of them. So here we go. Give it a little boosted launch. 2,000 RPM. That's 72 miles an hour. 4.21 seconds. I can definitely do better. So that was the first one we'll do. So we're going to try launching a little bit quicker this time. Last time we kind of held it. So we're just going to hit the RPMs and just launch it. Same mode, drag mode, advanced track off. Here we go again. Hopefully we get a better time. A little wheel hop. 60. Alrighty, we're gonna try one more here. Same mode, drag mode, advanced track off. We got a little wheel spin this time. We're gonna hold the RPMs a little bit. So we're gonna try it again, see if we can get a under four, hopefully. Here we go. So we just got back from Mexico and I think the best time we got was a 4.220 to 60. I'll throw all the draggy screenshots and data of all the digs we did today on the screen right here. It shows like all the data are like 60 foot and all that type of stuff. A big factor that actually plays in this is I have the 315 gearing in the rear differential. Now that does not get off the line as quick as the 355 gears do, but the 315 gears pull really long and hard on highways like doing a 60 roll and stuff. If I had the 355 gears, I'd be able to get off the line a little bit quicker than the 315 gears. Honestly, I probably should have ran the zero to 60 times later in the day because it was 3 p.m., 80 degrees outside. It's like the hottest point in the day. And usually when the sun sets, it starts getting a little bit cooler outside. Like I said, I did get a 4.220 to 60 today. That was not the best time I got in the S650. Actually, a month or two back, it was cooler outside, probably like, 60s 70s and the sunset and i hooked i got a 4.08 so i definitely think i can get into the high three seconds zero to 60s i definitely think i can do that and plus my gas tanks all the way filled i think i told you that i think last time i ran it pretty much low on e so in my opinion that is kind of impressive for the 315 gear since it doesn't get off the line as quick as the 355 gears maybe in the future we'll switch to the 355 gears but for right now 
I like the 315 gears. It definitely pulls up top. And on my S550, I actually had the 355 gears. So that's why I got the 315s in the S650 because I wanted to feel the difference between both. Honestly, I'm not really too mad at the time I got today. We could definitely do better in the S650, but obviously once I deteriorate the gas tank and get rid of the, some of the gas and the temperature drops a little bit, we'll do another dig. As of right now, that's the time I got. In the near future, I'm gonna do long tube headers and a full capback exhaust. That should add 30 to 40 wheel horsepower. I've seen people do that on the S650s. Once this S650 is tuned, it's gonna be a beast. It's already gonna be way faster than the S550s in my opinion. Honestly, it already is. I've already beaten two of them, but they're my friends, so no hard feelings on that. So that's it. Do you think that 650 is a W or is it a dud? Let me know in, down below in the comments. Honestly, I think it's a W. I actually like this car way more than my S550 in my opinion. What do you guys think? That's it. Drive safe, guys. Here's a sneak peek for one of the next videos I got coming up. Ford Performance Lowering Springs. I know I have the Steeda Progressives on right now, but they're a little too soft, and I don't really feel comfortable with these spring strut spacers on the vehicle right now. So what the Ford Performance ones are going to do, they're going to raise the car up a little bit, and they're a little bit stiffer springs. I heard Ford Performance won't give out their spring rates for the springs for some reason. It's like confidential, they said, because I asked. And I don't know why they won't say it, but whatever. It's going to raise the car up a little bit. The Steeda Progressives are a 1.3 inch drop in the front and about a 0.9 drop in the rear for the S650. It drops it a little bit lower on the S650s, but these Ford Performance ones are specifically for the S650. So they won't have like that increased drop. Every other spring manufacturer has springs for the S550 and they're just like, all right, these are for the S650 now and they're just transferring them over. So these ones are specifically for the S650. And plus, I like what Ford Performance did. They included uh, bump stops, thread lock grease, and also more bump stops for the rear. I heard these springs are a little bit more smaller than the Steeda ones, but there are more stiffer spring rates, so it won't drop as much. And you got this really cool navy blue. Kind of a shame Steeda doesn't include this with their springs, and they're either a little bit less or more money, actually. Depends what springs you get, but... Stita, take notes. I know a lot of other spring manufacturers include bump stops and whatever these things are. 